So, let's do something we're familiar with, to draw an analogy with language and what we're doing here today. So, we all know about language. All of literature is built of words, which ultimately are built of just 26 letters. And you can arrange the letters in different ways, and you build up different words, such as these two here. And with the same letters, I can move them around and make other words. So, there you have it. So letters can make many words. That's the first step. But now let's come to the second step. Words making up phrases and sentences. So let's put a few up here. And then we will use the grammar, the forces of language, if you like, to arrange those <laughs> into a well-known phrase or saying. Any volunteer that can uh, help us find the solution to this? Would you like to have a go? What's your name? Alice. Alice, right. Can you arrange those using the rules of grammar to make a well-known phrase or saying? Oh, you've seen it too, right. <laughs> to boldly go where none has gone before. Terrific, thank you. <laughs> so, does everybody agree that using the rules of grammar, that is the solution to the puzzle? <laughs> well, it's the solution to the puzzle, all right, but the national curriculum would probably require us to put it like that. <laughs> So, what is this analogy? Well, the letters have built up the words, just like the particles build up structures. And the grammar forces those words into meaningful sentences and literature. Just like the forces of nature move the structures around and build up the large-scale universe, the universe that we're familiar with. So, we're going to look at the forces. And we're going to meet four of them. Thankfully, the only four Fundamental four forces. Let's begin with the one we know best, gravity. Wow. If that is his Isaac Newton, he'd still be working it out. <laughs> gravity, the famous story of the falling apple and Isaac Newton coming up with the idea 300 years ago. And pretty well, the idea that he came about all those times ago is essentially true today. Gravity, the same force that makes apples fall on people's heads, also acts right across the universe. It's that same gravity that today we know is acting on the galaxies and with supercomputers we can even see what gravity does. Here is a supercomputer image of two galaxies, tens of thousands of stars, each one of which is pulling by gravity on the others. And you see the two galaxies gradually get pulled together by that gravity. And as they do so, the stars in the middle start getting pulled away. Tidal forces, the same source of forces that you see raising the oceans day by day, making the tides here on Earth, are acting right the way across galaxies on the supercomputer, just using Newton's law of gravity to work out the consequences. And you see, at the end, you had a very distended structure with wings right out here. But in the middle, where most of the stars are, they now start getting pulled together again by the same forces of gravity. Until at the end, you've got a very remarkable structure that you wouldn't have imagined if you hadn't been able to work it right through. Then you take your telescope and you look into the sky and you see real galaxies. And you find shapes like this that you might not understand if you didn't have the supercomputer to show you that using the laws of gravity, the ones that we understand, the falling apples and so forth, acting right the way across millions of miles, lead you with these wonderful structures of galaxies that you see in the sky. So that's gravity at work in the really large scale. So, that's the first of our forces, gravity. The second one 
is electromagnetism. The force that was in that rope that was stopping me falling to the earth. The force that makes things solid and gives things shape. Now, electromagnetism is like gravity in that it spreads over very large distances. But it's got another feature which gravity doesn't have. In gravity, everything attracts everything else. But for the electromagnetic force, there's two parts. Like charges repel and unlike attract. Let's see this demonstrated by Bryson's device. So this is a beautiful old machine that we're going to use to put electric charges onto these two spheres here. It'll put opposite charges, positive on one of them and negative on the other. It'll take some time to charge up, but what you will see is that when the charges on it are big enough, the attraction will pull them together and then they'll hit violently. Let's see this getting charged up now and gradually here they come and a spark jumps. Now, the moment they touch, they discharge and bounce away, the charge builds up again and pulls them. So here you're seeing the attraction of opposite electrical charges right there before your very eyes. Thank you. So that's one half of the story of electromagnetic charges, electromagnetic attractions and repulsions. That was attraction of opposites. Now we've got the repulsions of light charges and that creates a problem for us. Let's just think, we're all sitting here quite happily, nothing untoward happening to us, not exploding or anything. But inside us are atoms and in the middle of the atoms are nuclei and here is an enlarged picture of a nucleus with lots of neutral particles in it, but also lots of protons, each one of which is positively charged. Now, like charges repel. So each of these protons is repelling all the other protons. The nucleus then should be exploding apart, yet somehow it stays together. Now, that's a puzzle. We'll come to that in a moment and find the answer to it, but first of all, let me give you an idea of actually how strong that repulsive force is. Bryson's next demonstration is going to show us the repulsive power of electromagnetic forces. So, what we're going to do now is first of all cool down this ring so that we make the effect rather more dramatic. And we've got a magnet here which will turn on when Bryson throws the switch, when everything's ready. Okay, don't spill it over me. <laughs> this is about as cold as, well, the universe out there now. Are you all ready? Oh, this is going to be really dramatic by the time it gets going. Right, here it is. Ready to go. Put it on the magnet. Now, turn the magnet on. <laughs> okay, do you reckon we'll try it again? Well done. So, you saw there the power that magnets have got when you can make things repel. In fact, it sent the thing almost as high as I came down from at the beginning. And then it came down rather faster than I did. So, that's the repulsive power that you saw there with a large-scale magnet. Just imagine now, then, the strength of the repulsive power buried in the nucleus. These things are really small, pretty well touching, and each of them repelling with at least as much power as you just saw. So how come we are still sitting here happily without our nuclei exploding apart? There must be something very, very strong here, another force, a very strong force gripping the nucleus together and overcoming that repulsive power. Let me show you what we believe today that's caused by.